Well, hello there. Washington Street. Today we're just going to have a wander down this short street. We're going to see if there's any old stuff in the street. Architecture, that is. You know, Washington Street, they used to sit at the, on the eastern side of Anderson which was swallowed up by Glasgow in the mid-19th century. And then in the 1960s, the Kingston Bridge and all that kind of spaghetti junction of motorways and flyovers and stuff was built. And um, Washington Street seemed to have kind of missed all that stuff. Another side of it is Clay Street, which was kind of decimated like quite a bit of Anderson when all that 1960s stuff happened. As I say, Washington Street's kind of, um, it's, it's not the same as it used to be. It used to be an awful lot of industry in this one street, in the same way that there was a lot of industry in much of Anderson. But in the street, it, it, there's a kind of, there's the odd little thing that it, it sort of reminds you that there was industry here. So let's just have a wee wander down. I'm not going to go into a great deal of historical depth, I'm just going to look at the odd little architectural remnants and perhaps simply name past businesses and the industry that was once here way back in the good old days. Of course, the first thing we can see right at the top of Washington Street is the, the school behind me. A little remnant of the old Anderson. But before that school was there, I think around about perhaps the mid 19th century, I dare say before as well, there was a power loom factory right there. That had a little bit of industry replaced by education. What are we going to teach our kids these days? There's no industry at all. Something to think about.
And just a little further down Washington Street, now part of a hotel, is the absolutely magnificent structure that was once part of Anderson Grain Mills. It's very hard to appreciate that that was once uh, a mill, factory, business, making stuff. Look at it. The effort that's been put into that with the uh, red and uh, clean uh, bricks to just make it very, very nice to look at. And just that there's been you can maybe see it from here, I'm not sure, there's a kind of curving section just at the end there, just a curving section, a brick. Why would you do that other than to make it look pretty? So good to see it still here. The main structure in Washington Street these days that has a little bit of age to it is the kind of massive uh, storage facility behind me. Um, before it was actually built, I think that it was the, the, the Globe Iron Foundry used to be there. You know, the, the street in the 19th century seemed to be, be full of mills and foundries. Um, I think the building was built as some kind of whiskey facility, perhaps for the storage of whiskey, even the blending of whiskey. Uh, absolutely massive building, there must have been a lot of whiskey involved in, in, in processed in there. The, the building confuses me a little bit, I haven't looked into it really, um, but the windows are quite large. I would have thought any kind of building used for storing whiskey or dealing with a lot of whiskey would have had much smaller windows. Um, you're not wanting big windows that are going to invite people to enter your premises and steal your whiskey, you know. So the building confuses me a little bit. I can't remember the exact date, but it doesn't look as if it's a battle. 20th century, beginning of the 20th century would be my guess. Just a little further down Washington Street, look at this building behind me which clearly has some age to it. It's got the look of a late 19th century structure about it. And it was once perhaps offices or at least a kind of entrance to an aerated water factory that sat just behind it. Aerated water was just lemonade with various flavours. And you, you can, like many of the existing structures, you can see this on uh, old maps. I think it's shown clearly on a uh, 1892 or late 19th century order and survey town plan. Exact, exact building is order and survey is so accurate with what they do. You can also see on the map uh, an entrance or a passageway going through this structure somewhere, leading presumably into maybe a yard or the, the main body of the aerated water works. I think that's probably just here. This is a recent bit of stone that's it's been very well made to blend in with the, with the rest of the stone work, but it's clearly quite new compared with everything else. And I think this was probably where that passageway would have been to take vehicles to and from the, the, the interior of the trucks. Well, like many structures in Washington Street, it's just very nice to see that it's still here. This kind of 
large area of uh, spare ground. Uh, I think they're turning it into a car park or something. I'm not sure. There's fences get put up. This used to be the Vulcan Iron Foundry, and like so many of these old industries and businesses, we can see that on old maps. I think it's shown on a, a late 19th century ordnance survey town plan. And we're, we're towards the, heading towards the bottom, the other end of Washington Street. And you know, if, if, I was, if, if you've watched some of my videos, you may know, I just, I love looking at old stone. Because if you look at it for long enough, it starts to tell you stories. <laughs> and if you've watched my uh, Georgia Parrot video, you, you'll definitely be thinking I've lost the plot now. <laughs> Look at this old bit of stone. I, I wonder, I strongly suspect this was part of uh, the, the Vulcan Iron Foundry. And you've got various holes there that probably uh, were supports for wooden beams. Or little kind of slots, rather, for supporting wooden beams. There's just so much going on there. And just along here, there's also a, a, a red brick structure with a, a chimney still remaining. Was that part of the iron foundry as well? There's so much different bits of stone, you know, and just behind me here, just remaining walls of past industries. I find it just fascinating looking at stuff like this. But the thing is, on the other side of Washington Street, and this is probably the real reason why I decided to do this video, there's a, just a lovely little remnant of one of Washington Street's past industries. And I wanted to capture it on film before it disappeared because sometimes when there's work getting going on, these things appear and they can disappear so quickly and be lost forever. And it's just another side of the street. Once the entrance to the Crown Flower Mills, which was clearly at number 66 Washington Street. Just looking at that, I think there used to be metal letters attached to that. It, they've obviously gone, and then what we're seeing is just some kind of a remnant of them being there. As I say, I only noticed this a, a, about a week or so ago. I thought, I've got, I've got to do something there. I've seen it so many times where shops get renovated. Okay, it's not a shop. <laughs> but, um, and the, the old shop signs are uncovered. During kind of building work, old stuff gets uncovered. It can very quickly be covered up again and lost. I'd like to hope that this little bit of stonework will be retained. It would be a crime if it wasn't. You know, and you can see the little kind of um, points on each letter where the metal letters would have been attached to the stone. There's also traces of uh, old paintwork. I just love stuff like this. I had to capture it.
another set of range of buildings just behind me is apparently going to be demolished pretty soon or at some stage in the near future. And of course with so much industry men would perhaps like a pint of beer after their work. And just in, in this bit of land, well on, on the Broomy Law between Washington Street and McAlpine Street there was two pubs on each corner. Now, not just one in each corner, two pubs in each corner. And sometimes when you look at maps of this area, there's a lot, a lot of public houses and a lot of industry. You know, from the point of view of both industry and the architecture, we have, um, we have lost so much, yet gained so little. I'm Eddie Burns, bye for now.